What's hot and what's not in media trends for 2019? Does winning a debate on Twitter all come down to how many bots you have in your army? Do younger people favor creating a product in conjunction with a company compared to simply crowdfunding it? All those topics and more on episode 32 of Disruptive FM. It's Disruptive it's FM. Disruptive it's FM. Disruptive it's FM. Disruptive FM. Welcome to Disruptive FM, where business and culture collide. Sponsored by Microsoft and Branding Strategy Insider, with your host, Jeffrey Cologne. Okay, here we go! Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome to Disruptive FM, episode 32 for the week ending Friday, the 25th of January, 2019. I'm Jeffrey Cologne, your host for the next quarter hour, as we engage at the intersection of marketing, tech, media, and popular culture. Let's do this. Here are this week's trending topics. Cult of culture. The term culture is thrown around a lot in business. Heck, it's our tagline for this show. But what does it mean? We think one area we don't do enough soul searching in is media trends. Why is this important? Media influences us. You don't think so? Well, when is the last time you saw something and said, Wow, I like that look, or I like the sound of that. We may think we are the makers of our own destiny, but as social animals, we are all influenced and influence others. So there is a great person who understands culture we wanted to speak to, and understands cult movements within it. Rohit Bhargava is an ex-Ogilvy alum and author of the annual book, Non-Obvious, How to Predict Trends and Win the Future. He sat down with me recently in person at the offices of Microsoft to go over a few of these trends. One in particular really caught our ears. Let's take a listen. All of us have probably seen this um, struggle that we all have between how much technology is enough technology, how much screen time is too much screen time. You're seeing uh, platforms start to deal with that in various ways. So many of the social media platforms are now putting counters in so you can see how long you've been on the platform. Instagram put in that thing saying it'll show you when you've scrolled through all of your new stories. It'll say you're done. So you don't just keep scrolling forever. You can actually There's actually a finish line, <laughs> which is interesting. <laughs> and so what more and more of these platforms are saying is sometimes we want the downgraded experience. But it's not just about technology. Like, you know, it's fascinating because this was one that we've been exploring for several years now. Um, And we brought back this year because it was so interesting. um, Because you're going back to paper voting. People are buying vinyl records. Print books are still around, even though people said, oh, print books are dead because of e-books, right? Good example right here. We're holding physical copies. Yeah, Yeah. exactly. And and it's not an old, young person thing. I mean, I talked to my 10-year-old, and he wants the real book, which is the physical book. So this is a 10-year-old. This is not, you know, somebody who's old and is like, ah, I can would only read a book physically because you know, gosh darn these ebooks, right? No, it's not that. Um, so more and more, I think people are choosing when they want the downgraded experience. We were actually joking about this new phone, the punked phone, yes, which has uh, a unsmartphone, and all you can do is phone calls, and um, that's basically it. Uh, but they're crystal clear. There's noise canceling built into the headset. The battery power lasts for several days because yeah. you know you don't have all these apps draining the power. Draining the power, yeah, and um, it's optimal for certain situations, right? Yeah. And I think we're going to see more and more of those types of experiences where people say, look, I don't want all this other stuff. I just want to downgrade to the thing I really need. That was Rohit Bhargava, author of the book Non-Obvious, How to Predict Trends and Win the Future, joining me at Microsoft recently to tell us what to look forward to this year in media trends. Deliberate downgrading is one of them. Hopefully you don't plan to downgrade your podcast selection and delete this show. Trending Topics on DFM. Digital Gangs. So we all know about the Gillette commercial. We covered it in episode 31. But what we didn't know is how certain Twitter personalities can control the narrative and win the debates by having large digital gangs. Here's how it works. You buy a bunch of followers... In those followers, some are legit, others not so much. Then when outrage over something happens, you unleash your message and have it carried across the Twitterverse. When measuring sentiment, you win because most social sentiment measuring tools have no context built into them. Piers Morgan is really good at this. 
He amplifies a number of sock puppet Twitter accounts to carry faux outrage around topics. This gets the topic trending. And when people look at the topic, they see the narrative controlled by the larger and more active digital gang. There's no bullets necessary, nor bombs, but the effect is scarier because it is very easy to game the system. In the past, you had to do countless hours of PR, talk shows, communications, and media tours to get your message out there. Now, you simply have to have a larger and very active gang of bots to carry your message, and you get your 15 minutes or 15 hours of fame. Warhol was right. It's just that he lived during a time when the medium we thought would always remain the most powerful, television, has ceded power to a little tweeting bird. Oh dear, please help us. Trending topics on DFM. Crowd collaboration. We've partnered with a really cool technology called Ask Susie. Check it out at AskSusie.com. In one of Ask Susie's data research projects, they found more millennials are foregoing crowdfunding and instead turning to companies to collaborate on product development. This is a topic discussed at length in the book Disruptive Marketing. But what does it mean going forward? Well, maybe Kickstarter could get a kick to the curb. In years past, younger generations had to rely on companies run by older generations to sell them products and services. Those companies might have refreshed their marketing to appeal to new, presumably naive customers, but they saw no imperative to shift their underlying business practices. These days... Greater access to information makes it harder for companies to market themselves one way, as green, local, or socially responsible, as an example, but behave another. Uber's well-publicized ethical blunders, for example, have costed a lot of goodwill among millennial consumers, and the once unstoppable taxi app is certainly not alone. As millennial entrepreneurs rack up commercial successes and millennial consumers approach boomer-like levels of buying power, there's every reason to believe that they're the ones who will define commerce and product development in the next couple of decades. The degree to which idealism drives that definition may be unfamiliar, but the principles themselves are not. Take care of your workers and your community. Pay your taxes, reduce your impact on the environment, be honest with your customers and your partners and your employers, and listen to customers if they have ideas on designing your products. They use them or want to use them and don't simply want to be a funding source so you can get your idea on Shark Tank. Communal corporations, is this the next stock to buy on Wall Street? Stay tuned. You're listening to Disruptive FM with Jeffrey Cologne. Now, here comes the music. It's Disruptive FM, the culture of business, brought to you by Microsoft Advertising and Branding Strategy Insider. I'm Jeffrey Cologne. Reach out and touch us on social media. The Instagram and Twitter handle is at Disruptive FM. And connect with me personally on Instagram or Twitter at DJ GEO FFE. And for more in depth analysis on some of these topics, check out bingads.com slash intelligent search and branding strategy insider.com. Also, create better video with Iographer. They make accessories for your mobile devices so you can make professional quality videos. Learn more about all the products we use here at DFM at iographer.com. This week we got new music from Cosmo Nection. This is a track called You and the Session Victim Remix. You can check it out now on Spotify, Cosmo Nection. The Session Victim Remix of a track called You. We'll post the link in the description of this episode if you want to check it out. Tons of Gear was showcased earlier this month at Consumer Electronics Showcase in Vegas. So let's lay it down on what was hot and what was not. Hey, nerds! Listen up! 
Disruptive FM presents the new Hootie Who in Turned Up Tech. Hootie Who! Geargasm. Shut up and take my money! A couple of big themes at CES beyond the tech was the need for more transparency. Transparency on how your data will be used if, for example, you buy a smart vibrator or a voice-powered toilet. What happens with all that data? But beyond this, the big things on display centered on human design. From the smart blankets on display to the remote controls that contained five buttons total and were all voice controlled, we are moving toward more simpler devices after a decade of, let's make this as complex as possible. Another big piece of tech wasn't hardware, but software, specifically software when it comes to streaming. The OTT streaming wars were on full display with presentations from Disney, AT&T, Comcast, and their partnerships with LG, Samsung, and Apple. This is an area to watch. According to Ask Susie, 68% of people polled will only pay $15 per month for streaming services, with a smaller segment of 20% saying they would pay $39. This means OTT services have their work cut out for them because consumers may only want one service. And the other big talking point this year? Well... 5G isn't here, but it is on its way, and it's going to change everything. Where have we heard that before? Okay, it's time to check out some brewing stories you should have your eye on bubbling at the edges. It's a segment called On the Radar. Here's what's on our radar. Here's what's on our radar. Number one. Pharmacy startups like Capsule, PillPack, and Roman are trying to modernize the pharmacy industry in part by offering mobile services and delivery. That has caused traditional chains like CVS Health and Walgreens to test similar ideas as the market gets more competitive. Last year, Amazon acquired PillPack for $1 billion. Capsule, which received $50 million in funding in August, now plans to double its staff size to 450 employees and will also start its expansion beyond New York to Boston, Philadelphia, and Washington, D.C. Number two. In the midst of flu season, a new kind of bug is spreading around the office. Sick shaming. Employees are increasingly less willing to tolerate sick colleagues and are finding new and not-so-subtle ways to combat germ-ridden co-workers who insist on coming in. It comes down to what academics call presenteeism in which employees continue to work while sick because they fear losing pay, falling behind, or missing out on FaceTime with their superiors. Hey, go sneeze on somebody else on your own time. Number three. Valentine's Day's most popular candy will be missing from shelves this year. Sweethearts, the heart-shaped candy imprinted with cute sayings, will not be available after original producer Neko went out of business in July after more than a hundred years. The company that now owns the brand, Spangler Candy Company, says it simply didn't have time to make this year's supply in time for February 14th, but plans to be ready for 2020. If that candy isn't around, does Valentine's Day really exist? That's a wrap for episode 32 of DFM. Make sure to rate, review, and subscribe to the show so the algorithm gods can make us popular. Or simply tell others about it with your voice. You can follow us on Twitter or Instagram, at Disruptive FM. And you can read more in-depth content via our three sponsors, bingads.com slash intelligence search, brandingstrategyinsider.com, and diographer.com. Next week, we speak with Jordan Berger, Strategy Director at McCann, on trends she's measuring for 2019 based on social media activity. Until then, for everyone here at DFM, thanks for checking us out. I'm Jeffrey Cologne. Catch you next week. You've been listening to Disruptive FM with Microsoft Communications designer Jeffrey Cologne. All thoughts are his own. Disruptive FM is produced in Los Angeles by Feeler Media. 